The latest version of Docker for Mac has Kubernetes support built right in. You can now use a single tool to build, ship, and run your containerized applications. And when you run locally, you can choose between Docker Swarm mode and Kubernetes. What you get in Docker for Mac is a full single node cube cluster using the latest version of Docker as the container runtime. Docker is also bringing the concept of stacks to Kubernetes. And with Docker for Mac and soon with Docker Enterprise Edition, you'll be able to deploy stacks to Kubernetes using Docker Compose files or using Kubernetes manifests. In this video, I'll show you how Kubernetes is integrated with the Docker for Mac UI, how to manage the local Kubernetes cluster, and how to deploy Dockerized apps to Kubernetes. I have Docker for Mac started, and you can see from the whale icon that Docker is running. Kubernetes isn't enabled by default. You switch it on here in Preferences, where there's a new Kubernetes tab. I'll enable kube, but I don't really need to see all the kube system containers, so I'll leave that unchecked. You'll see the traffic lights change, and both Docker and Kubernetes are shown as starting. That starts up the kube master and API server, the pod network, and the kubelet. Now we're running, I can use both my favorite command lines to manage my local environment. Docker container list shows me there are no containers running, and kubectl get pods shows me there are no pods. I'm going to spin up the demo app from DockerCon EU 2017, where we announced support for Kubernetes. There are two ways to deploy this app. One is a Docker Compose file that I'll deploy as a stack, and the other is a Kubernetes manifest I can deploy with kubectl. I'll do both, starting with Docker Compose. Here's the Compose file. It's pretty simple. There's a database, an API, and a web front end. The Compose file has the build settings, and all the source code is in this directory. The database docker file uses Postgres and packages a SQL script to deploy the database. The web front end is a Go application, which uses a multi-stage docker file. The build stage compiles the app to a native binary, and the application stage packages that binary into a tiny image based on Alpine. The words API is a Java application, it's also using a multi-stage Docker file, using OpenJDK as the base image for the builder, which builds with Maven, and again using Alpine for the final application image, which just deploys the JRE and the compiled jar file. I'll use Docker Compose to build the whole application, and because I've already built the images, everything comes from the cache. I could use Docker Compose to run the app, but I want to use the same platform locally that I'll be running in production, so I want to deploy to an orchestrator. Docker version shows me I'm currently using Kube as my orchestrator, and I can take my nice, simple Compose file and deploy it directly to Kubernetes using Docker stack deploy, and giving the stack a name. So my app is running as a Docker stack now. I can see it in the list, and I can see the services in the stack, but these are not Docker Swarm services. If I look at the Docker service list, it's empty. These are Kubernetes services, and I can see them with kubectl. I can also see the pods, which shows me I have five instances of the words API. Each pod's running a single container, and Docker container list shows me those containers. Here's the application running. The website shows a random sentence built from words served by the API, which fetches them from the database. It's great that I've got an integrated Docker and Kubernetes environment in one tool, but it goes deeper than just making my life easier. My Docker files use multi-stage builds, and I need a recent version of Docker to get that functionality. A lot of Kubernetes deployments package an older version of Docker, which means your production environment is using a different container runtime from your development and build environments. With Kubernetes in Docker for Mac, and soon in Docker Enterprise Edition, you're going to have the exact same runtime in every environment. Okay, so that's a Docker stack running on Kubernetes deployed from a Docker Compose file. You can also deploy directly from a Kubernetes manifest. This YAML file describes the same multi-container application in Kubernetes format. There's a service and deployment for the database, a service and deployment for the words API, and a service and deployment for the web front end. I'm using the same set of Docker images, 
and the service for the web front end is a load balancer, so this becomes my public endpoint. I'll remove my existing stack and deploy again using kubectl apply. This creates all the services and pods, and I can see the deployments, but it doesn't show as a stack because I didn't deploy it as a stack. And although I can see the deployments, I'm missing that stack abstraction that tells me these are all part of the same application. But my pods are running and my containers are running, and if I switch back to the application, the end user experience is exactly the same. The last thing I want to show you is that same app running in Docker Swarm. Docker still has Swarm mode built in, and you can run orchestrators side by side. I'll initialize the Swarm, and now Docker for Mac is running a single node Docker Swarm cluster and a single node Kubernetes cluster. There's an environment variable, Docker Orchestrator, which I can use to switch the client between Swarm and Kubernetes. And since my Kube app is still running, I'll change the port in the compose file and deploy to 8080 on the Swarm. It's the same docker stack deploy command with the compose file and a stack name, but now these are docker services. The two applications are running together, using the same docker images to create containers, just using different orchestrators. I'll check the application. The Swarm version runs on port 8080, and you can see the behavior is the same. And my cube version is still up and running too. And that's Kubernetes running in Docker for Mac. It's a full Kubernetes deployment, integrated with the latest Docker runtime and the fantastic user experience that you expect with Docker for Mac. You don't need to install any additional tools, and this is pure Kubernetes, not a fork. If you're currently using Docker Compose or Docker Swarm and you want to evaluate Kubernetes, you can now do it with no additional overhead to your development environment or your project configuration. Just download or upgrade to the latest Docker for Mac, and you can use your existing Compose files to deploy straight to Kubernetes. If you're already a Kubernetes user, this is a great way to simplify and standardize your toolchain. Docker is providing the full, native, open source Kubernetes experience. This isn't forked or wrapped. You get the latest Kubernetes scheduler, working with the latest Docker runtime, and just a single tool to manage them both. You can get Docker for Mac from Docker Store, and you can head to docker.com slash Kubernetes to learn more about how Docker is bringing Kubernetes support to the Docker platform, including production-grade orchestration with Docker Enterprise Edition.